uh, you remember how is the shape of uh, uh, the, the AC signal? The AC signal, uh, this is the voltage, uh, this is the time, and uh, the signal is positive and negative. How is created that positive and negative? You remember this, guys? You remember this and this? What is this? The rudder. And what is this? The coil. The coil. Okay. And uh, where are produced the magnets? In the rudder or in the coil? The coil. In the rudder. Those, those are the magnets. Uh, okay. Ah, yeah. And the power of the magnets, the strength of the magnets, how heavy are the magnets? Uh, depend of uh, the current entering here through the brushes. You remember from the ignition switch. If the current is good, good voltage, good amps, what happened with the strength of the magnets? Is strong. Strong. No? And of course, if I have strong magnets, when the magnets are spinning in front of the coil, what happened with the output signal? Is a strong, strong signal. Oh, if the magnets are weak magnets, when the magnets are spinning, produce 12.6, 14? No, probably 11 or, or 10. I have a question. This battery bank is 12 volts. My alternator, because the, the excitation here from the ignition switch through the brushes is weak and only enter 11 volts. Yeah? Of course, in the output here, when the alternator is spinning, produce 11.6. With 11.6, can I charge that battery bank? No. You remember, what is the voltage that uh, is 100% full charge? It's 12.5, no? 12.5, 12.6. If that alternator produce 11.6, can I charge that battery bank? No, I need 12.6 or higher. No? That's correct? Okay, this is, this is in, in, in DC. But I remember that the alternator in the first stage produce AC current. Mm -hmm. When this is positive and this is negative. This is positive and this is negative. Let me, let me explain something before we continue with that. If this is the rotor, and this is positive, 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 and this is negative. negative, no? And I have the coil here, and the coil continue here. Pay attention. The rudder is spinning in this direction. Anybody follow me? And I have consecutive positives and negative, positive and negative. When, when this positive section, when this positive section is passing in front of the coil, when the first part of this positive touch the first part of the coil, what happened here? When the fir first part, I have all of this part, when this portion touch or not touch is in front of this, start this point. When it's in the middle, it's here. When it's here, it's here. And after that, continue the negative portion. And stay here, here, and here. Ah, yeah, I know. Okay, and now this one, you know? Ah, is when two consecutive magnets, positive and negative, pass in front of the coil. I produce, I produce one, one, cycle. one cycle. One cycle. <laughs> nice, no? Mm -hmm. What is the other name for those metallic magnets? The poles. The poles. Look, in a typical marine, in a typical generator, those are the amount of poles, the typical amount of poles, one, two, three, and four. The typical generator that you have in your home, in your boat, they have one, two, three, and four. 
positive, negative, positive, negative. That's correct? In what moment they become magnetic? When they receive the excitation, the, this is the exciter. The excitation produces the strength of the magnets. This is the rudder in a typical marine generator, and this is the stator with the coil. You see the coil? Yes. It's exactly the same like this and this. You remember that one? And you remember that one? Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same. But this one has more, more like poles, poles, poles than this. But it's the same. Coil on the stator and poles in the rudder. Now, we are going to try to understand why they use four poles. In some generators, they have two poles. But at the most common is four poles. All right? It's exactly the same, AC current. And now you understand why the signal is like this. Is because two consecutive magnets pass in front of the coil and produce that cycle. Anybody follow me? Mm -hmm. Good? This is the rudder and this is the stable. Okay, great. And uh, this is one cycle. cycle. What is the name of this distance? The distance from zero to the maximum. What is the name of that distance? Captain, what is the name of that distance? The amplitude. amplitude. This is the amplitude. The amplitude. And this is the cycle. And now you understand why the AC signal is also called alternating signal, because it's passing from positive and negative, and once again, it starts other positive and other negative. How many cycles have the American current? 60, 60 cycles in one in a minute. period of? One minute. Seconds. One second. 60 cycles per second in American current. What about the European current? It's 50 cycles per second. Let me explain something, my friend. No. It's other cycle here and other over there. And finally, in American power, you introduce in one second, in one second, 60 cycles. <coughs> How much is the amplitude in American current? The amplitude of, this, of the wave. The amplitude. This is the voltage. The amplitude is voltage. How much is the voltage per phase in American current? 120. Around 120. Yes or no? The amplitude in American current is 120. And uh, the number of cycles is? Is? 60. 60. What is the name of that number of cycles? What is the? Hertz. The, the, the hertz. And this is frequency. And this is the symbol. My friends, frequency is lambda. Lambda. Yeah? And, uh, and uh, it's uh, for American power, 60 hertz. For European power, it's 50 hertz or 50 cycles. 50 hertz or 50 cycles. Good. And let me explain something about the frequency. We are going to try to understand the, the formula for frequency. Uh, it's the same formula that we use in intro to calculate the frequency produced for the propeller when the propeller is spinning. The frequency is, the formula for frequency is this. Frequency is divided by 120. What is N? The number of poles. The number of poles. Ah, let me let me try to calculate 
how much RPMs I need in the generator, in American generators, when the generator is producing current to create 60 hertz. How many RPMs I need? Okay, look at this, American current. American current is uh, 60 hertz. This is the frequency. What is the formula for frequency? Is the number of poles times the RPMs divided by 120. 120. Okay, I want to know the RPMs for 60 hertz. Is 60 is 60 times 120 divided by the number of poles? How many poles I have in, in, a, in a typical generator? Four. Four. Four poles. Okay, how much is that? 60 times 120 divided by 4. 1800. 1800 RPMs. Don't forget that. This is for American power. Now we are going to calculate the frequency of European power. European power. In European power, Uh, we have 50 hertz. This is the frequency. And the formula is, once again, the, no the number of poles times the RPMs divided by 120. How much are the RPMs in this particular case? Is 50 times 120 divided by 4. 50 times 120 divided by 4. 1500 RPMs. Oh, nice. The generator in my boat is running at 1500 RPMs if my boat is European boat. 